Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of Talk Blockchain to Me. Today I'm covering a topic that I'm sure a lot of you have a strong interest or curiosity in, and that is Bitcoin. A quick preface before I launch into this topic, I'm providing a pretty high level understanding of you know, what a Bitcoin is and how the transactions work, which means that I'm obviously glossing over some very technical details. So with that out of the way, what exactly is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency, which is a currency that's driven by computer code. There are currently over 7,000 types of different cryptocurrencies out there, but Bitcoin is the most famous one. So let's think of Bitcoin as the Uber of digital currencies, right? So there's Uber, there's Lyft, there's Get, there's Via, but most people know and use Uber. Similarly, in terms of cryptocurrencies, there's Bitcoin, there's Ethereum, there's Ripple, there's Litecoin, but most people know of Bitcoin. Now let's go a little bit into the history and origin of Bitcoin. So immediately after the 2008 financial crisis, there was a paper that was published online by someone named Satoshi Nakamura. Now this name is actually a pseudonym, which means that till this day, we don't know who the true identity of Satoshi Nakamura is. It could be one person or it could be a group of people. This paper is titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and it was widely circulated online. Essentially, this paper established a framework for the Bitcoin cash system and from it kickstarted the whole development of the blockchain ecosystem. So in this paper, Satoshi Nakamura solved what is known as a double spending problem, which has um, traditionally stood in the way of any sort of digital currency development. So what exactly is the double spending problem? So let's think about this. If you send someone an email and you attach um, a PDF to the attachment and you send the email to your friend, um, that PDF does not disappear from your computer once you press send. Or, you know, if I text a photo to my friends, that photo does not automatically get erased from my phone as soon as I send it. But when it comes to digital money, it becomes really important that if I send $5 of digital money to someone that I don't have that five dollars remaining because you know if you think about this like if I can send you um, so if I have five dollars of digital money and I send that to you and I send that to Charles and I send that to Maggie and I send it to a whole bunch of people that presents a really obvious problem and this problem is the double spending problem um, so until recently we never had a solution to you know this um, double spending problem without the need for a central authority like a bank to verify it and what Satoshi Nakamura figured out is a way for me to send money to you without needing a bank to confirm that there is no double spending. So how exactly do Bitcoin transactions work? Um, so first I think it's important that we should think about um, Bitcoin transaction less like a traditional currency transaction and more like a global ledger. Um, if you watched my previous video, you know that a ledger is a public record of all the transactions that are done, and in this case, done on the Bitcoin network. And by sort of keeping this public record, it basically ensures that the person who is spending the Bitcoin really owns them, and it also prevents fraud, which, um, you know, because there's a sort of public accountability to a global ledger like that. Secondly, Bitcoin transactions rely on the consensus or the agreement of all the people who are on the network. The consensus concept was also explained in my previous video, and at this point I think I'm just gonna put a link um, in the description box so you can watch it um, to kind of just refresh your memory on, on these terms. Now let's put this into an example that's somewhat easier to understand. So let's say you go to your local grocery store, right? And at the checkout, you use your Visa credit card um, on a credit card machine. So the way that the money goes from you to the grocery store is that it has to go through from you to Visa, then to the grocery store. But in a Bitcoin transaction, that money will go directly from you to the grocery store without the need for what's called the third party or a central authority like Visa to validate that. So essentially the Bitcoin process is where the agreement of the people on the network validates payments and transactions and the removal of the third party central authority, again, in this case Visa, is really where the innovation is. So at this point you're probably wondering, okay, so how does someone even kind of come into owning Bitcoins? Like if I wanted to buy a Bitcoin, where would I go get that? So the easiest way for someone to own Bitcoins is just by going to an online exchange platform like Coinbase and just using US dollars or whatever currency you currently use and just buy Bitcoins from this online platform. 
or you can engage in something that's known as mining in the Bitcoin world. So if you recall, as explained in my first video, um, a blockchain is a, is a chain of different blocks and that contain transactions in those blocks. And once a block reaches its size limit, then obviously a new block has to be created after that. And because Bitcoin is a sort of like open and public network, it relies on its users to keep it going. So there are these users or miners who are basically on their computers and in order to create this next block, you have to guess a sequence of computer codes to basically unlock it and cr create the next block. And this sort of guesswork actually takes a pretty significant amount of computer power and um, at kind of like as a reward for it, you are rewarded 12.5 Bitcoins for every block that you can create. And basically the software that is behind Bitcoins had set a limited amount of Bitcoins from, from its creation. So there is a limited kind of money supply if you think about it like that. And at its current growth rate, um, that is set to max out at the year 2140. So this was a ton of information that I just threw at you. And I think what might be helpful is if I posted the transcript to my video here on my blog, if you go to talkblockchain2me.com, um, you can you know easily refer back to. I'm also going to post the link to the Satoshi Nakamura article if you want to read it with some of the understandings that you gained from this video. Like I said earlier, this is a super high level understanding of you know what Bitcoin is and how the transactions work. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at talkblockchain2me at gmail.com and I'll try my very best to answer any questions that you might have. So until then, um, I'll see you guys next time.